Welcome to Too Many Podcasts, the podcast about podcasts. Now, podcasting from the Sherpa Chalet on Mount Podcastia, he's your host, Jim, the podcast Sherpa. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Bruce. Hey, you know what I just realized? And I know this is a real valuable lesson for those of you who want to get into podcasting. You know, when you make little recordings like this, the save button really does a lot of good for you. <laughs> I Apparently, I had recorded about half the show, never saved it. Poof, gone into the stratosphere, down into the valley of Mount Podcastia. Hello, everybody. Hello, all my rebels of the Sherpa Lucian. It's me, Jim the Podcast Sherpa. I'm hoping to hit save when I'm done recording this. It's Wednesday. It's a new episode. Anyway, that's what I hope you're hearing right now. And if you're not listening to it on Wednesday, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just being silly. I'm a little punchy today. I just wanted to let you know a little something. In two weeks, we will be putting out the kind of a sneak preview, I guess, for another podcast that I will be working on, and it'll be coming out next year. So you've got a little time to gear yourself up for it, because I know I'm going to need a little time to gear myself up for it, especially as long as I'm remembering to hit the save button when I'm recording. On November 1st, you will be hearing that promo here, and the show will be released with just a little promo. And I made a little video to go along with it. So those of you who are following me on social media, you can also check that out too, I hope. The promo will be out on November 1st, and it's there for you to check out. And also there will be an accompanying video to go along with it. Hope you're checking it out, and I hope that when the time comes and the show is released, and you will know through this show that you do follow and subscribe and uh, catch all the episodes. I think it's something that you're really going to enjoy. It's... It's a collaborative effort, so it's not going to be just me. I'll uh, say that much. We will be having a show next Wednesday and on the 31st, which is Halloween. You may be out trick-or-treating, and you might not hear the show, but I hope that you will be listening that day. And maybe if you want, you know, save your ship or a little candy, maybe some dark chocolate or some Tootsie Pops. Those are my favorites. Just letting you know that. And, you know, here's my idea. Instead of knocking on the door and going, Trick or treat! Why don't you sing this song instead? It's theme week. It's theme week. It's theme week. I guarantee you that will probably get you all the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups you will ever need for the rest of your life. But, of course, if I do get any trick-or-treaters here at the Sherpa Chalet, I have to be ready if they knock on the door and ask me this question. Who's our guest today, Sherpa? And I'm glad you asked, because this week's interview is with a guy named Scott Johnson that I spoke to, and I really had a fascinating conversation with him. He was a lot of fun to talk to, and he's got a great podcast. It is called What Was That Like? And it's real people in unreal situations, and you've got to hear some of the stories that he has to tell. I'm not even going to kind of hype it right now. I'll let him tell the story. It's really very, very enjoyable. So it's definitely worth checking out. And just as a reminder, this podcast is being brought to you by Audible, as it is every week. And you can get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash Sherpa. And there are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So check it out if you're definitely into books. But if you're into podcasts, stick around and you're going to hear some really interesting stories from Scott. And let's head on down to the Sherpa Chalet and check out the interview that we had this week. Welcome to Sherpa Chat. And, you know, it's raining outside and it's kind of flooding almost. But don't worry, I'm safe here in the Sherpa Chalet. But, you know, if I was in any sort of danger, and I wanted to go on a podcast to talk about it. I would probably have a conversation with the guest that I am speaking with right now. His name is Scott Johnson, and he hosts a podcast called What Was That Like? And he talks about ordinary people in extraordinary situations. Let's say hello to Scott. How are you doing, Scott? Hey, Jim. Thanks. Glad to be here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? 
Well, I uh, I live in uh, the little town of Safety Harbor, Florida, which is in the Tampa Bay area. And my primary business, my day job, so to speak, is repairing computers. I do computer repair and upgrades and data recovery and all kinds of stuff, just about anything computer related. And I have clients all over the country because a lot of it can be done remotely. So, but that's the boring part. The exciting part is the podcast. <laughs> How did you end up doing this kind of podcast? What, what inspired you? Well, actually, this is the kind of content that I wanted to hear myself. You know, I love hearing a good story. And it's really, it's that much better if it's actually a true story, something that really happened. And I looked around and, you know, I looked at other podcasts. I mean, there are over 700,000 podcasts in existence right now. And maybe there is some other show that's doing this kind of thing, but I couldn't find any. And so I thought, okay, uh, I've got a little bit of experience already. I think I'll just make this show myself. You know, I haven't seen any shows that are like yours, too. It is, it is definitely mm -hmm. very unique, and mm -hmm. it's definitely worth checking out. As I, we were talking before, I was looking at some of the titles of the episodes, and we have Diana Survived a Plane Crash, which I guess is your most recent one as we're uh, recording this one. You have yep. someone who was shot on the interstate, someone who accidentally started a business that was a came like a dating advice website i believe right yeah yes uh we had a, a man who saved a life while he was golfing a man who lost his son someone who was injured by a boat propeller and this one we we have to discuss a little bit here i'm just going to read the title and i think you know which one i'm probably going to say too i think i do <laughs> shiny 80s own foot that's the one now it's actually one of one of my most popular episodes so far really well what happened is this this is a guy who and shiny's not his real name but uh he he and some of his friends had always had this kind of a jokingly half serious half joking conversation where they would they, they asked each other if you had the opportunity to taste human flesh and you could do it ethically and uh, legally, and maybe even in a healthy way, would you do it? And, you know, they all said, oh, sure, yeah, knowing that that opportunity probably would never present itself. But then one day, Shiny was in a motorcycle accident, and he ended up having to have his foot amputated. So when he was in the hospital, he asked the hospital, can I have my foot back? When he was going to, you know, leaving to go home and they had it refrigerated. They had him sign some paperwork and releases and, and uh, documentation and everything. And so he took his foot back and then he started making phone calls to his friends saying, Hey, remember what we talked about before? What do you think? Are you up for it? And they said, yes. So there was a day where about 10 of them came over to his house and one of his friends is a chef and they, uh, they had what they call foot tacos. <laughs> and uh, so the, it wasn't like a full meal of a foot, but it was enough that they each had a good, you know, a good helping. And it was, uh, you know, a brunch to remember. I guess he was literally putting his own foot in his mouth. <laughs> That's one thing he said when at that gathering, there was a lot of dark humor. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be if you're eating your own foot. Right. right. Otherwise, it's just awkward. And yeah, it's but yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting one. <laughs> were there any other ones that you thought were really uh, interesting like that? Well, they really, to be qualified to be on the show, it has to be something really, really interesting. And I, I have a really high standard on what I consider to be unusual as far as a story. But one that kind of stands out for me is uh, the title of the episode is Tyson was abducted. This was a uh, Tyson is a, a young man, probably in his 20s. And he worked uh, retail and he was leaving work one night, walking across the dark parking lot and uh, a Land Rover, an SUV approached him with two guys inside. They grabbed him, threw him in the car and took him to some house somewhere. He didn't know where it was, but they beat him. They tied him up. They kept him there. He ended up being held there for a year and a half. And during that time, they brought in couple of other people that they had taken and just all kinds of really weird stuff happened over that time until he was finally able to escape. So that's, uh, he had a little bit of PTSD when he 
when he uh, when he finally got out. And a couple of the weird things that happened after he was able to escape is the people that kidnapped him never faced any criminal charges because when he told the policeman his story the night that he escaped, the cop said, well, you know, to me, it just sounds like a domestic dispute. It's, it's your word against his, his. You've been living there for a year and a half. And so there was never any criminal repercussions for the people. But the other thing is when he finally got out, you know, he hadn't been in contact with anyone, his family, his friends or anybody for a year and a half. And he went to his parents' house where he lived prior to this and they were gone. They had moved and he didn't know where even where they were. And when he finally found them, he contacted them by telephone and they ended up disowning him because of the stuff that he told them that went on. They were embarrassed that he had that he was forced to engage in homosexual behavior. And they're very conservative people. I mean, he has a younger sister who now just says that she's an only child. They don't have anything to do with him anymore. So it's a, it's a really weird story. And he tells it very well. So it's a it's a really it's a really gripping episode to listen to. Not all of your stories I know are have to do with people in peril. You know, there are right. some that are a little bit lighthearted, like uh, the, the I guess it was a woman that married a wrong number. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she was traveling for business. Uh, her name's Casey. She was traveling for business, and she was supposed to meet up with some friends from her company at the hotel, and she couldn't find anybody. And finally, she sent a text message to one of them saying, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm here by myself. I've got nobody to hang out with. Well, she sent that text to the wrong number. And the guy on the other end who actually got the text said, well, I think you sent this to the wrong number, but, um, but if I were there, I'd hang out with you. And then they just started chatting back and forth, found out they had a lot in common, even though their age difference is 30 years. He was, I think he was 29. She was 59, but yeah, like three years later, they ended up getting married and they're still married. The episodes with the people in peril, did you notice a kind of common thread between some of them? Like, I mean, were they people who were maybe too trusting or they just like you said, they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Were they people that maybe didn't mind flirting with danger or anything? Or these were just things that just kind of happened? All of the above. <laughs> yeah, I don't really I, I don't know that I've seen any common thread. There are like. Wrong place at the wrong time is the very first episode number one, uh, Jennifer, who accidentally killed someone. She, you know, it was nighttime. She pulled out into an intersection, didn't see the motorcycle approaching from her left. And he ended up, you know, he hit the car and he ended up dying. Uh, So that's kind of the wrong place at the wrong time. Someone that doesn't mind um, taking doing some dangerous things. There's one called Chris hung from a hang glider. And this is a guy who. Went over and went on vacation over to Switzerland and he went hang gliding and he'd never hang glided before. So, you know, he and the instructor were were both in the hang glider. They went running down the hill and they jumped and got airborne. And that's when he realized he was not attached to the hang glider at all. He was literally hanging by his hands. So they and and the and the uh, instructors trying to land it, but. They're, they're getting higher and higher. I mean, they're thousands of feet in the air. And I think it was like two or three minutes before he was able to actually get the hang glider to, uh, you know, to land. And he dropped and he said, I, he said, I couldn't have held on for another 15 seconds because he would just, you know, his hands were just so tired. He, he did end up breaking his wrist. But, yeah, that's somebody who just decided to flirt with danger a little bit and. You know, it was an instructor mistake, obviously, but he is actually going back and he uh, was going to hang glide again just to get it right this time. Because <laughs> what he said is, you know, you think about the statistics. What are the chances of that happening twice? Right. And, you know, he's going to check the uh, straps and belts and everything this time. <laughs> and he's got your email just in case anything does go wrong. right? Oh, yeah. I would want to talk to him. Sure. <laughs> Based on your own life experiences, do you think that there would be anything that would warrant an episode on your show? Perhaps. Yeah. Um, It's not something that I even want to talk about yet. Okay. Because it's something that uh, is something that happened within the last couple of years. And I'm kind of toying with it in the back of my head of maybe making it an episode. But 
Yeah, I haven't decided that for sure yet, so I wouldn't want I wouldn't want it to be out there yet. Because it's your story, like you said, and you know these people are very brave to come onto your show and tell their story too. So I guess was there ever any apprehension from from some of the guests? I have had some that have not come on the show because you know I talked to them, and uh, there was one that was a guy who was a security guard, and he was um, he was guarding a mall. And I think he was outside the mall at this point, and there was a drive-by shooting, and uh, there was a little child that was that was killed in that, and it was such a traumatic thing for him, not just that he saw it happen, but the fact that he was security, you know, he was supposed to be protecting the people at the mall, even though there really wasn't anything he could have done, but still, there's that element of guilt, and uh, he he said, it's just I can't talk about it, so. Yeah, there are some that it's just uh, it's just too much. And it was almost too much for the one there's uh, what? uh, Let's see. Travis lost his son. Mm -hmm. That's one of my uh, recent episodes, maybe even a month or so ago. And he was uh, he's just a a man who he had two sons, both teenagers. They both have asthma. And one night the kids were there by themselves and um, his son had an asthma attack and didn't survive. And that you could tell in in his voice, it was still fresh. It had only happened when I interviewed him. It only happened about six weeks prior to that. So it was still, it was very difficult for him to talk about, but he wanted to, he wanted to come on and talk about it mainly because with his son's death with, because he was an organ donor, he was able to save other people's lives. So he wanted to uh, increase the awareness of being an organ donor. That was his incentive behind that. Wow, that's that's probably an amazing thing for a dad to do too, especially dealing with a with a hurt that fresh and then at least putting some sort of positivity on it after such a horrible loss. Right. I can I have kids. I can't imagine going through something like that. Mm-hmm. Like you said you survived Times Square on New Year's Eve too. Yeah, we did. We uh <laughs> My uh, my wife and I, my birthday is on New Year's Day, and the year I turned 40, we lived up north at that time, and uh, I said, okay, how about, I've always wanted to do that anyway, go to Times Square on New Year's Eve, because it just looks so crazy, and this was only uh, a, a year or two after 9-11, so security was crazy, and uh, and we were able, we brought our two kids, and we had a couple of exchange students from Ecuador who also went with us and another uh, friend of theirs. So we had five teenagers with us at the time and that it was a fun story. Uh, something like that. I wouldn't even consider that to be unusual or crazy enough to, to be a story on the show though. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes going in New York city is a little bit braver than the hang gliding story. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Depends on what you run into. I'm sure. Are there any episodes that you wouldn't do on your show? There are a few types of uh, stories that I don't – that I decline because I get approached by people all the time saying, hey, I've got a crazy story here. Let me tell you. Well, I don't do anything paranormal because most of my stories – well, all of my stories, I try to verify that they're true. And with a paranormal thing, you can't really confirm that something actually happened or didn't happen. So uh, so they got that. I've got – most of the time I will avoid uh, medically oriented stories. Because there are lots and lots of stories of people who, you know, I had this rare disease and I wasn't supposed to live, but here I am. And five years later, I survived. And I don't know. I mean, it's not not to discount the fact that it was a big thing for them in their life. But for me, it's not something that really piques my interest a lot, you know, because because it's fairly common. And the other thing is any stories where the primary topic is drugs or sex. Uh, because, you know, when somebody starts off a story, I got so blacked out drunk one time and here's what I did. Well, to me, that's just boring. You know, I, I don't care what you did. <laughs> so I, I try to, uh, I, those are three categories that I generally avoid unless there's something, there's some other aspect of the story that makes it more unusual. So there's really like a lot of circumstantial stories where the circumstance is something that's really beyond their control that it just in most cases, yes, more they're they're event based and uh, something that see here's what I want when I you know how when you subscribe to podcasts and you've got all the podcasts on your phone and your podcast app and you're looking down if you're like me 
I can't, I don't have time to listen to all of them because I've subscribed to too many. So you have to kind of cherry pick which episode you look and say, Oh yeah, okay. I'll do that one or that one or whatever. I want people to look at my new podcast episode that just comes out and say, wow, I've got to hear that story. (laughs) That's my criteria. Yeah, well, you've definitely got the headlines to uh, and and the stories to back it up. So mm-hmm. I don't think that's a, probably a big problem for you. Is there, I guess, what we could call a dream episode for you? Right now, I'm looking for someone who survived falling off a cruise ship while it was underway. So anybody listening, if that has happened to you, I want to hear from you. <laughs> I can't say that I know anybody that that's happened to. Yeah, it's not very common. I, it has happened, but uh, I haven't come across anybody yet. There's a few others I'm looking for. I'm trying. I'm going by memory here because I don't have the list in front of me. But I'd like to talk to someone who has won the showcase on Price is Right. I'm looking for someone who was imprisoned for more than 10 years and then exonerated because they were innocent. Um. There's a few more. I can't. Uh, I've got a list, but I, I'm just not coming up with them right now. It's funny. I'm, I wrote down like, maybe he'd want to talk to an astronaut or someone who won a huge lottery or something like that. But I guess they're kind of fail in comparison to uh, to what right. you just mentioned. I do have someone that I'm in in talks with who recently won millions in a lottery, but uh, it was recent. And I have a note and I have an agreement with this person that I'm going to talk with them after a year later. Because that kind of there's more to the story than, hey, I just won the lottery. You know, how did you manage the money? Did you blow it? Did you, you know, because so many people you hear about, you know, they win the lottery and a year later they're broke. So that's uh, that's why I'm waiting on that one. You want to beat them to the punch before TLC gets them, right? Mm, right, right. But didn't they do a show? I think the lottery ruined my life or something like that. I I'm, sh- I'm sure they have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said you listen to a lot of podcasts. So what are some of the podcasts that you're currently listening to? Well, there are a few that I listen to regularly. Uh, one is uh, Darknet Diaries. It's a really popular one. It's kind of security, computer hacking oriented, ethical hacking, where uh, the host tells stories of people that have done kind of crazy hacking things. And it's very well done, very well put together. There's one that I listen to every Monday. It's the School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. And that's a podcast about podcasting. Get a lot of good information from there as a podcaster. He also does another one called the Podcast Rodeo, where he will just listen to the first few minutes of a random podcast and then give his first impressions about you know what they did right, what they did wrong. And uh, that's always kind of fun to listen to. And I discovered a brand new one that I'm actually pretty excited about. That it's, you know, it's not like it's a secret. Everybody knows about it probably, but it's called Office Ladies. Have you heard about this one? No, I can't say that I have. Office Ladies. It's with uh, the the two ladies um, that were on the TV show, The Office, Angela and Pam were their character names. And they are, they're doing, they're doing an episode by episode kind of behind the scenes, what happened on the set and all that kind of stuff. I just heard the very first episode today. And if for people that are a fan of the office, which I am, I've gone through, I've listened to the, I mean, I've watched the whole series probably five times. And for people that are fans of that show, this is like a a jackpot. So I'm kind of excited about that one. All right. And you know, on our show, we have a little portion of the interview called shameless self promotion. Shameless self promotion. Shameless self promotion. And that's where you get to let everybody know how they can reach you and a little bit about your podcast. Absolutely. Well, my podcast is called What Was That Like? And it's you can get it on just about any podcast player like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. It's on Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, Radio Public. So just about any podcast player or just at the website, whatwasthatlike.com. I'm always looking for new stories. If you have if you look at my list of episodes and you have a story of something that happened directly to you and it would fit in. As one of those episodes, feel free to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. 
Yeah, and just please don't eat your feet before you contact Scott because it's already been done. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was you're too late on that one. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. So all you toe nibblers, sorry, you're uh, you're out of contention. <laughs> so Scott Johnson, what was that like? That's his podcast. Be sure to check it out. It's definitely interesting. Thanks so much for coming by the Sherpa Chalet. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me on. It was it was fun. And now it's time for Sherpa Suggestions. And welcome back. Hey, you know, I have to make a correction. The 30th next Wednesday will be our next show, not the 31st on Halloween. So don't worry, you can hear our podcast and then go trick-or-treating the next day. And then the following day on the 1st, that's when you can hear the promo for the next podcast. So I figured since next week is Halloween, I found an article online at geek.com and it was called the best scary podcasts to get you in the mood for Halloween. So here are some of the titles that you might want to check out if you feel like getting scared. And the first one we have is called The Edge of Sleep. And this is a story where a night watchman wraps up his work shift and he finds that everyone who went to bed the previous night dies without an explanation. And he then joins a group of survivors who force themselves to avoid sleep and investigate this mysterious global problem. Okay, we also have Odd Tonic. And this is hosted by Jennifer Page and Maxwell Holacek. And they take you to the parlor. And you can listen to some eerie tales that span the paranormal, strange science, and bizarre history. Calls from the dead, unexplained disappearances, and haunted battlegrounds are waiting for you. Make sure you listen with the lights on. And we also have Ghost Town. And Ghost Town explores the most odd, uncanny, and hair-raising places on Earth. It's hosted by Jason Horton and Rebecca Lieb, and they talk about the locations of famous crimes, abandoned amusement parks, and more paranormal destinations. And there is Cryptids. And that is a scripted sci-fi series which was created by Alexander V. Thompson and directed by Devin Shepard. And it's focused on the afterlife. It follows Trevor, a late-night conspiracy radio show host, podcaster, and Eve, a, a pediatric hospice nurse, who try to study the truth and purpose of death. However, there are other plans in store for the duo. And don't forget Walking the Shadowlands with my friend Marianne. That's always a really cool one about paranormal and occult stuff, too. Definitely worth checking out. And we also have Nocturne, which is about what's called the Graveyard Shift and what happens during the Graveyard Shift. And this podcast aims to explore how people's thoughts, feelings, and moods evolve after the sun goes down. And listen to the freaky tales that take place during the graveyard shift and open your mind to all the possibilities. <laughs> wow, that was a pretty good Boris Karloff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm available for parties and bar mitzvahs. Oh, uh, back to the countdown. We have The Moonlit Road. And this is a story about the American South. And you hear a lot of chilling legends, folklore, and myths involving boogeymen, tombstones, and spirit-friendly structures. And the next one is a favorite of our previous guest, Corina, from Morning Cup of Murder, and it's My Favorite Murder. And that is hosted by Karen Kilgarth and Georgia Hardstark. And they tell you a lot of uh, historic tragedies and cold cases and all of those spooky murders that haunt people today. There's also the black tapes. I saw a tweet here that says they know. They know everything. Hashtag do you believe? Hashtag the black tapes podcast. And it's a serialized docudrama that highlights a journalist's investigation as she tries to break through lies and learn about her subject's strange past. The catch. Something supernatural is affecting both of their lives. And next we have Beyond with Mike Kelton. And Mike Kelton is a comedian and self-proclaimed energy expert. And he takes listeners on a journey to understand the supernatural in his podcast. I think that's scary enough, is it? Woo! You know, I'm sorry. I'm still spooked out by that eating the foot story. Now, I'm wondering, you know, so if you eat your own foot, does that make you a heel? Does that make you an expert on what tastes like feet? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much for listening. It's been a pleasure having you back once again this week. And be sure to come back next week, too. Special thanks to Mr. Scott Johnson this week. And be sure to check out his podcast, What Was That Like? It's definitely one of the more unique podcasts that you will listen to. It really makes you think, and it might even spook you a little bit, too. It's definitely enjoyable. You can follow us on social media on Facebook. Twitter or Instagram, and I've been getting a little bit better, getting in a regular habit of posting stuff there every week, right when the shows debut. I post a little bit more on Facebook if you're interested in kind of knowing a little bit more behind the scenes, but I'll try and throw some more stuff in Twitter and Instagram as time goes by, too. I'm trying to be a little more social media savvy, so please be patient with me. That was one of my goals for season two. If you're loving the show, be sure to leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio, or Stitcher.com. Any of those places will let other listeners know who might want to check out the podcast that you're enjoying it. And if you're not enjoying it, send me an email at jimthepodcastchirpa at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you've got a podcast, also send me an email. Next week, we've got a really fascinating guest. Again, his name is Howie Kra, and he hosts a podcast called How We Doing It? And it's about resiliency, and I think you're really going to like this guy. I know I say that about a lot of my guests, but I have wonderful guests on. I mean, that's not my fault. But (laughs) I'd rather you have guests that you can enjoy than guests that are going to make you turn off the podcast. But definitely check out Howie Craw, and he talks a lot about resiliency. So, you know, everybody needs to make a comeback in life one way or the other. So he definitely gives you some good pointers, and he's a guy who's lived through it. And he's had some rough breaks, and he's had some good times, too. And I really enjoyed talking to him. He's a super nice guy. We became fast friends during the interview. And he's had a lot of nice things to say about me on social media. And Howie, I really appreciate it. And it's going to come right back to you, my friend. So in the meantime, have a Sherpalicious week. And we will see you on the 30th, next Wednesday. And after that, on November 1st, once again, check out the promo for the new podcast, which will be coming up next year. We'll be having another promo in the near future, too, to give you a little bit more details. But I think you're going to like it. And when you check out that promo, make sure you subscribe to it so when the new episodes start launching, you'll get them right off the bat. Have a wonderful week. Mr. Bruce, could you please show our guests out? Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Viva la Chapalution! Thanks for listening to Too Many Podcasts. Please disperse. You can go home now. I said you can go home now. Viva la Chapalition. Viva la Chapalition. <coughs> oh. Yell, come back now, you hear? Tastes like feet.